Push the button. 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 Well, I keep hearing people say uh, button. Oh, that's how the kids now talk. That's yeah. how they talk. That's my friend Sue off camera, by the way. She'll be pulling for the uh, mystery button. box later. But Speaking of which, so the mystery box will be coming up. Uh, the drawing. Hi, Glam Babies. <laughs> um, the drawing will be coming up at the end of this video, so please stay tuned. Uh, or if you're impatient, just, you know, fast forward through the rest of it and then check out the last couple of minutes. So uh, this is a glamour. Hi. <laughs> I am back and it's good to see you, my glam babies. I'm gonna jump right in. I have a special project going on this week and what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about rural thrifting. We have seen a couple of people, I've seen a couple of people in chat rooms, not chat rooms, but like online chats and I've seen a couple of people in comments and things like that who talk about some of the finds with other resellers that they, um, that they have found in larger cities and they're not, they seem to be a little bit resentful that, that we're, they're not finding the same sort of sourcing that you would get in a smaller town. So, um, so this is for anybody who's been transplanted from cities and is thrifting, anybody who lives in a rural area and is thrifting, you probably already know this, but just a good reminder. Um, and we're gonna uh, jump right into some of the things that you can thrift in a rural environment. Now, when I say a rural environment, I actually live in a rural area. Um, I live in a small town outside of St. Louis. And it's kind of weird because I grew up in the city area, not the city proper, but long story short, I grew up in the city. Um, so I, got really used to having my choice of thrift stores. I mean, you can do, you know, 10 thrift stores within 10 minutes. Uh, there was always a chance to buy designer. There was always a chance to find higher end things. You knew where the wealthier neighborhoods were and you could go there and thrift and things like that. So you had a lot of options. In a rural area, what I'm finding is that there are many fewer options. If you're lucky, you have a Goodwill or a Salvation Army or a St. Vincent um, or a Savers. And sometimes that's about it. And maybe a mom and pop shop down the street. So one of the things that you have to consider when thrifting in a rural area, when you thrift in a place that doesn't have as many options, is what can you make from what you have? Because the ultimate goal with reselling is not to be the fanciest kid on the block, it's to make money, right? Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about how you can maybe make some money thrifting in those areas. These are things that I've tried and things that flip really, really well for me. Um, let's start with the with the most obvious. I think I I hate to be super Captain Obvious because you know, but we're gonna have to go there. Carhartt, Carhartt ball caps, Carhartt beanies, Carhartt flannel. It's all it's all stuff that you'll find in rural areas because a lot of times you'll have like working class guys, blue collar guys like my husband. Um, guys who work outdoors and they really do need something that's very, very good. And Carhartt is sort of one of those brands that, you know, tends to sell towards that, this group, our, our, our demographic. So um, Carhartt is, is uh, I think, a lot easier to find in rural areas than in the city, simply because there's just so much less competition for it. Not, you don't have a hundred people looking for the same beanie. You have, you know, two people and one of them's already got 12 of them at home. So it's, um, Carhartt is always, uh, and those working class brands, if you if you look for things like Dickie coveralls, um, if you look for things like, I don't know, even, um, I, I just found some Wranglers. Now, Wranglers don't normally excite me that much. <laughs> Um, but they they had the FR on them. If you find some jeans, and whether no matter where you're thrifting, if you find some jeans or you find shirts or you find sweaters or something like that, not sweaters, sweatshirts or something like that, that is labeled FR, I would pick those up because they flip for more than what you think that item is going to because they're um, the FR is fire rated. And so a lot of working class guys, uh, that stuff is so expensive to buy brand new, so expensive to buy brand new. Um, 
my husband bought a pair of uh, working of working pants um, that were FR and they were over $100 for just a pair of pants, but they're fire rated. So that made a huge difference. So if you see the, ter the word FR on something or you see like a lot of orange labels, look into it. If it's fire, if it's uh, fire rated, then you're probably going to make money flipping that. And I would definitely sell that on eBay as opposed to Poshmark because you're going to get more money and you're going to have a much, much wider audience. You're going to have those guys that just started working. Okay. Keep going. Sorry guys, had to put on my glasses. Um, uh, Levi's too. I keep coming across Levi's and Levi's and Levi's and Levi's. Keep an eye out for those vintage Levi's that have the orange tags. Also, you know those Levi's that are torn up so badly, the back pocket's out or it's got a skull mark on it or a wallet mark on it and it's got like, and we're not talking about deliberate distressing with the slices at the knees, it's not like that. These are ones that are worn around the cuffs. They're worn around the pockets. They're just beat up. They've got oil stains on them and paint on them. And I would pick those up because those actually sell better than a deliberately distressed Levi, at least that's been my experience. Distressed Levi's, distressed uh, uh, jeans in general do really well. And specifically on Poshmark, you're going to get, uh, that That was where I had the most success with my distressed stuff. Um, band tees. Band tees. My husband asked me when I started thrifting for profit, I said, is there anything you want me to keep an eye out for? Because I'm going to be thrifting a lot now. And he said, just keep an eye out for band tees and concert tees. And I thought, oh God, here we go. There's no way I'm going to find those because the, because the demand for those is so high right now, uh, especially like authentic band tees. Guys, I went to my local Goodwill and I found the Who, and it's a, it's a, the Who brand band tee um and that was at the hard rock cafe and it was the signature series so it had like the signature like pete townsend and some other guy um it i also found him uh acdc uh i found him two different led zeppelin t-shirts um i found my son a Jimi hendrix t-shirt and then we had it uh bleach dyed and it was just amazing so my because my youngest son was also asking about that so guys if you really like band tees if you're looking for band tees honestly get out of the city go to your rural areas because i think you're gonna find those and for the people living in rural areas you got this trust me these are guys that would that would hold on to their band tees for you know 30 years and then if they passed away or if they moved or something their families would donate it or they would donate it. Um, so really, and look for those vintage Rush t-shirts. Um, the Rush heads who have been to those concerts are really, they're so, they're like, hey, where's that Rush t-shirt? <laughs> Trust me, they want it. Um, let's talk a little bit about Harley Davidson. What a great American brand. I kind of like them like I like Ralph Lauren. It's just, it's just always solid quality. I thrifted a Harley Davidson hat at a local thrift store and I got it for $1.50. It's like a ball cap, Harley Davidson, orange ball cap. I sold it for 20. I sold it for 20 on eBay and it went like that. I mean, it went within a day and there were more than one, there was more than one watcher on it. So um, note to self, start charging up for the Harley hats, but um, Harley Davidson motorcycle boots too. I've had those in both my eBay and my Poshmark closets. I, I come across them, you know, in a rural area, you just, you tend to have more people riding motorcycles and things like that, more outdoor activities. Um, and so the Harley Davidson stuff, uh, you can find it in the rural areas. It's, it's, again, there's not as much competition for it. Um, it's not as, as, you know, go for the jugular to get that Harley t-shirt and the, you know, you've got your choice of like a black one or a white one, or, you know, get the orange Harley jacket or uh, there's much more availability. And it's something that I, I pay, will, am willing to pay up a little bit for because a brand new pair of Harley boots is like $162 to start. So, uh, something that has a high resale value. Um, it's not a designer brand, but it is a very, very, very desirable brand. Um, just keep your eyes out for Harley Davidson. And 
frankly, some of the other motorcycle stuff that has like the padding in it, um, that's also really desirable. And you can get uh, anywhere from 100 to $300 for one of those jackets or one of those padded pants. So it, that is worth taking a look at. Um, vintage pieces. There is... A, uh, there are a couple of leather jackets that I have in the other room that I haven't put up yet. Um, but there are a couple of leather jackets that are so hideously vintage in 80s, I will never wear them again. I mean, they have the shoulder pads, they have like the V, some of them have a range. And those are hugely popular right now. Those are, uh, there's kind of a, we're, we're moving from the 70s back into the 80s and 90s, and the millennials are even looking at the, like the Y2Ks. Um, and all of those vintage leather pieces are really selling well. I have, I do have an Argentina uh, black leather skirt in my closet. Now there's not a lot, a lot of room, but there's not a lot of movement on skirts, period. Um, but at least I came across that and it is beautiful and it's really great leather. And the great thing about leather is you can sell it forever. I mean, it lasts for a really, really long time as long as it's taken care of. So um, think about those vintage pieces. Uh, I found a vintage shirt from the 70s that has absolutely no label and I can't wait to list it because it's so fun and gorgeous. So um, a lot of those vintage pieces you can find, again, it has to do with um, it has to do with people just keeping things and there's just not as much competition. There's just not as much competition. Um, also, uh, just a quick side note in the, in the, in the reseller shops in rural areas, what I'm finding is that, um, the staff isn't as designer aware because a lot of them are from the local area. Um, so they're not as high end designer aware when it comes to when it comes to designer brands that are not very obvious. Chanel, Gucci, Prada, those are very, very obvious. And anybody can, you know, anybody who has a television set will probably put those aside. But I got, um, and I'll have my sister put a, a picture up of this. I got an Emmanuel Ungaro polka dot silk, 100% silk blouse, button-up blouse with a pleated overlay, um, with a pleated uh, neck toe, necktie, sorry. It was so gorgeous. And I walked into a Salvation Army and found that. I found it immediately when I walked in the door. It was right in front. Everybody was walking right past it. And it had a $4.50 price tag on it. And I bought it immediately and I flipped it for $81. And $81 was the discounted price. So please, please don't be afraid to look for those designers that are not that are not the super obvious designers that you see on the outside of everybody's purses or pants. Look for those good vintage designers and those good um, those good designers that are not as sort of social media saturated or you know what I'm saying, I'm sure. <laughs> those designers that you don't see a Kardashian like wearing their logo. You know what I mean? Like we, we want really good French designers and, and really good Italian designers. And you can find those, a really good English tweed and things like that. You can find that. Um, naturally distressed items. Oh, I think we already talked about the Levi's, but also look at things like jean jackets. Um, and not just the Levi jean jackets, but jackets in general, old leather jackets, old jean jackets, um, uh, old t-shirts. I know it sounds crazy, guys, but I swear to you, an old torn up t-shirt with like the bottom all rough and a couple of holes in it, and maybe even some stains on it, um, can still sell can still sell because there are people who don't have access to things like that because you know they live in a suburban area where you just simply don't have those um for whatever reason you don't have a shirt that's quite that distressed i mean it gets to a certain distressing point and mom mom throws it away or donates it um but and i would definitely keep your eyes out for those uh distressed items i'm i'm just saying they do have a resale value so keep an eye out for those now here are some strange trends that have popped up that I, again, 
in my rural area, they're not paying as much attention to what's cool on TikTok. Um, it's not that the kids aren't on TikTok. I, you know, they're on as much social media as any other kid. But I feel like they're not, the demand's not there yet. It, it's always kind of a half a second later. And in those half seconds, you have such an opportunity. Here's an example. Um, the Gap sweatshirt that one of the TikTok influencers was wearing, and I think it, I want to say it was like one of those two sisters. I'm horrible at this. I'm, I'm so old. Um, but those Gap hoodies with the Gap logo spelled out, and it's it's Gap, and it's, it's specifically a hoodie that is not a zip-up hoodie, and it's got the front kangaroo pocket, and it's got the Gap logo on it. Also collegiate sweat sweaters and sweatshirts. Um, and when I say collegiate, what I mean is that it's got like, you know, it's got like, I don't know, Washington University spelled out in, in the big letters and, and the big embroidered letters on the front. Uh, Truman University, something like that. The collegiate sweatshirts are huge. The style makers are all talking about it. And it doesn't matter what college it is. That person did not have to go to a college, especially if it's a young kid. Um, if they're in high school or uh, even if they're going to a different college, they will still pick up those collegiate sweaters, sweatshirts, sorry, sweatshirts. There was also the, there's also the the star of the show, the, the brown puffer jacket from the North Face that somebody wore and now everybody wants it. So it's kind of one of those things where you have an opportunity to get in there and, and get those things. I've already scored two uh, Gap logo sweat sweaters, sweatshirts. One of them is on my site and the other one will be posted within the next 24 hours. So I'm really excited about those. Okay, so comfortable clothes. Um, here is another example. Pendleton sweaters and jackets came into vote recently. I, at my local place, picked up two Pendleton sweaters and a Pendleton wool jacket. And one of those sweaters is a cashmere red Pendleton turtleneck, which I think is going to sell really well. There are also things like old sweats that you would think would be ready for the bins, the garbage bins, really. And turns out they sell incredibly well. So like old starter sweats, old, you know, Calvin Klein sweats from the late 90s, um, old track suits, the Juicy Couture track, shoot, track suits that everybody, the Juicy Couture track suits that everybody is, uh, that everybody got rid of and hates and hated coming back in. Everybody's looking for those now. You can't find them in the bins anywhere, but I'll bet you that you can find those in a rural area a lot quicker because, you know, they, it just, it, they take a moment to catch up. Um, cowboy boots. Oh, cowboy boots. Okay, so cowboy boots, uh, including Laredo, not, but not limited to, uh, Laredo, Tony Lama, Coral, Corral, I should say Coral, it's like I'm not from here. I'm solidly Midwestern, I promise. Um, Corral, uh, Ariat, Justin, and Lucchese. Um, and Lucchese is spelled L-U-C-H-E-S-E, -E, like the crime family in New York, but different. But not real crime. So anyway, um, the cowboy boots are another thing that are much, much more common in my area. I keep picking up cowboy boots and funny enough, I keep selling cowboy boots and some of those boots go for a pretty penny. Some of those boots new are more expensive than a pair of Gucci loafers. So I would recommend picking up, uh, picking up those cowboy boots as long as they don't have holes in them. If they're a little distressed, that's kind of even better because people like the distressed look. And remember too, that a lot of people who are buying these secondhand cowboy boots, these distressed cowboy boots are people who live in cities. So they really kind of want them to look like a, a working boot. Um, also, and my last thing, the last thing that I'm gonna bring up is, uh, it, it is sort of hard goods. Um, 
we're looking specifically at things like Pyrex. Pyrex is one of those things that your grandma has like 20 of or 50 of or however many of in her basement. And sometimes grandmas don't stay with us forever. Uh, it's something that you would want to sell on eBay as opposed to um, Poshmark. But man, if you can find the good stuff, you would not believe what it is worth. There are Pyrex, there are Pyrex sets and Pyrex dishes that are that their value is just incredible. There's one, and I think it's it's like Field of Hearts, I think is what it's called or something, but you'll look for it. Um, it's a Pyrex dish, it's like a white milk glass, and it's got uh it's got like little green grass painted on the side of it, and then it's got like little hearts. If you can find that. Good God, snatch it up because some of those some of those bowls go for thousands of dollars. That's no joke. That's Pyrex. So keep your eyes out for that Pyrex too, and you're more likely to find it in a vintage in a rural area where you don't have a thousand, you know, other vintage shoppers who are looking for it. So just to kind of recap, here are some rural bolos, bolos for rural areas. Um, Fox racing. You definitely want to keep an eye out for Fox Racing. Their leggings go for like 70 bucks. So if you can find a pair of Fox Racing logo logo leggings, you're probably in, a, if they're in good condition, 30, 40 bucks, and they're still getting like half off. Um, Harley Davidson, everything. Carhartt, just about everything. All of the jeans aren't doing so well for me. Um, but the the hats, the shirts, the everything else does great. Um, FR, anything. Anything that's fire rated, Keep an eye out for, pick it up. You're gonna make some money on it. Pyrex, look for this Pyrex. Look for look for Pyrex. And there's there are other designs that are not as they're not seven thousand dollars desirable, but they're still like two hundred dollars desirable. So you know, you pick up the Pyrex, and I would learn a little bit about it. Kind of do a little study on that. Um, cowboy boots, and again, the brands of cowboy boots that that are the most uh, high quality cowboy boots and the most expensive um, that are not sold at Nordstrom's because country people don't go to Nordstrom's. I'm joking. Of course we do every day. Um, no, we it, it's rare. We'll just say that. But uh, for cowboy boots, Laredo's, um, Tony Lama, it's kind of kind of one of those gold standards. Corral, Ariat, another gold standard. Uh, Justin cowboy boots, always a gold standard. Uh, Lucchese cowboy boots, always another gold standard. And those are all things that you can find at the boot barn. But I mean, even at the boot barn, you're going to spend like $600 sometimes on some of these boots. So when I tell you they have a high resale value, you better believe it. Um, Levi's and specifically you want to look for uh, torn up Levi's or the vintage Levi's that have the orange tab on the back pocket, those are worth a lot of money. The red stitching, you wanna look for that. Um, but in general, if you want if you want a good bread and butter band, brand, Levi's are it. You can always sell a pair of jeans online. You can always sell a pair of jeans, and especially Levi's. Um, and concert tees, keep an eye out for concert tees because you're gonna find those in rural areas, I think a lot a lot quicker than you would in other areas. So hopefully this has helped uh, some of the folks who are living, you know, a, a little outside of a major metropolitan area. Um, I hope it helps you. And uh, before this video gets any longer, we're gonna go ahead and do the drawing. It's time, Yay! guys. Yay, glam babies. Uh, this is a hat from Buck Heights, by the way. Uh, that cost me $1.50 at my local Goodwill. And Buck Heights is like one of those farm equipment stores. Um, so they have, uh, they have like feed and you can buy a chicken if you want. And it's just one of those stores, um, but it's actually got a pretty big following in rural areas. So again, I think this hat will resell online for 15, 20 bucks. I'm not mad about that. That's a dollar fifty. I feel good about that. So here we are. We're ready bring to bring your own drawing. chicken. Right, BYOC. Bring your own chicken. Glamma does not provide the chicken. Chicken not provided. Gary, you gotta put that in the comments. You can uh, also walk the pig at Buckeyes. That's true. Aww. You can walk the pig. Good. They have a pig that you can walk at Buckheights. So, you know, Buckheights, the store where you can walk a pig. 
Um, so we're going to do the drawing and, uh, Miss Sue is off camera. She does not want to be filmed at this time. She's not feeling, she, she's not feeling herself today. So I don't have makeup on, so she says she doesn't There's have that. makeup on. I think she's gorgeous either way, but you know, oh my gosh, she's you. very modest. So we're going to have her reach over and pick out a name out of the hat for our drawing. Good luck guys. <laughs> Good luck hands. everybody. Look. Ah. I feel like it's staying <laughs> from the Addis family. <laughs> like this ghost hand. Wouldn't that be cool if you what could edit out her arm? Hand you have? If you could edit her arm out, that would be hilarious. Well, it's not really in the shot. It's just her hand. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Miss Sue, pull out a name and let me know who is won our mystery box this month. Ta-da! Ta okay. Our mystery box winner is Jaylene Castro. Yay! Yay! Jaylene, there's your name right there. Jaylene, Jaylene. Please don't take my mystery box. I'm kidding. I'm totally oh, mailing it to just you. Just because you can. Just because you can. Okay. Sue, one more name out of the hat. Sorry, I had to do something. <laughs> okay, here you go. Can you take the hat off camera, yes, please? Can. Thank you. And this is my Laura Joy, my little bundle Yay! of joy. Laura Joy, yay! yay! There you are. And Laura actually has a different name, but she looks very young, and I don't want to put her name out on the internet. So, um... So, Laura Joy and Jaylene, I hope that you guys both enjoy the mystery boxes that I'm making you. And um, I congratulations on your win. Yay! I'll be mailing those boxes out and notifying you uh, on Wednesday, February 3rd. Um, so, expect those should be on their way to you by the time that this airs. And then we'll do an airing of what was in the box uh, after you've had a chance to get it and open it. So anyway, Glam Babies, it has been such a pleasure to do mystery boxes with you. Stay tuned for next week. I'm expecting a thread up box in the mail. So uh, it should be the 25 piece women's box. And we're gonna look forward to unboxing that. But if not, I also have a ginormous Goodwill haul that I, oh, I went to the bins guys. It was Did you go fantastic. Down? No, I went with you. Okay, were you, that's weren't the you there? Okay. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> you were remember there. One time we right? Remember that one time, like last week when we went to the not bins? Many, not the one time you went without me. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's a critic. <laughs> I love you, Glam Babies. I hope you have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Be kind to each other. And just remember, Glamma loves you. Bye.